pastors who fulfill their functions well be accounted worthy of a double honor, especially those, because there were pastors at the time whose office was not primarily preaching, who labor in preaching the word and in instruction. 1 Timothy 5.17, and you can compare that with 1 Corinthians 14.1-4. The word is the pastor's great instrument. We are commissioned by God to preach the word to an assembled congregation time and time again. The subject matter of preaching, as we've said the last four times, is the word of God alone. And we will run that soapbox right to the bitter end of this particular series. William Perkins gives the reason why the word is to be preached. The word of God is God's wisdom revealing from heaven the truth which is according to godliness. Scripture is seen by the preacher as excellent. And its exceptional power lies in its power to penetrate into the spirit of man and its ability to bind the conscience. William Perkins summarizes Scripture's message by stating that, quote, The true Messiah shall be both God and man from the seed of David. He shall be born of his heavenly Father's bosom. He shall satisfy the law. He shall offer himself as a sacrifice for the sins of the faithful. He shall conquer death by dying and rising again. He shall ascend into heaven. In due time he shall return for judgment. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Mary, meets all these requirements. Therefore, Jesus is the true Messiah. He alone is to be preached. We must then begin or end with him in every sermon.